The story of the Bass Feast, written by Denison, begins with the introduction of the town boulevard, where the dean and his two daughters, Martin and Philippa, live. And my explication is based on the chapter right after the introduction, where the story between Martin, Philippa, and Babette has actually started. The scene where Babette first comes into the story is simply attention grabbing. It gives the readers a feeling of death and extreme darkness in the first place, but then a sense of epic hero and royalty afterwards, in which there are many descriptive words and metaphorical languages to be extricated. However, the initial deadly pale appearance of Babette is very puzzling for readers if they do not understand the historical background of the story, the French Revolution, or namely the Paris Commune Revolution in 1871. Babette was a Parisian refugee who has fled from France to Norway. In order to understand this important scene, a core question has to be raised. Are the metaphorical languages used to describe the bats in the paragraphs related to the warring background of the time period? And if they do, how? And my answer is definitely. The author is intent to connect the background of French Revolution with its languages in a profound and comprehensive way. In the first paragraph, Denison repeatedly used a number of figurative languages to connect the negative appearance of the bat with the French Revolution. First of all, the 15 years later presents a huge shift in timeline, during which the 1871 Paris Commune Revolution had happened, and apparently the chaos caused by the war had pushed the bat to Martin Philippa in Norway. The scene where the bat first appears is set with scenes of death. As a result of her escapement with bare life from France, rainy night is definitely a negative sign here. And if there is a scene of rainy night in the movie, we know that something bad will happen. Here, it makes the first impression of Martin and Philippa on the bed very awful. The bed was described as a massive, dark, deadly pale woman, from which we could not only see the emotion on her face. Which is fear and sadness, but also feel the starvation and tiredness caused by the long journey from France, and this explains the reason why she violently put the bell three times, which is her anxiety, using all her remaining strength, praying for the notice of Martin and Philippa, who, for Babette, the harbor where she can get food, take a rest, and keep warm. The words "dead" and "deadly." Were repeatedly used to emphasize that the war was so evil and dehumanized that a woman with strength is tormented to swoon. Either the sunken eyes or the fumble are the evidence of her exhausted body and mind, or her desperation and helplessness, which is brought by the war. However, there is an interesting implication from the detail where it says the frightened lady has restored her to life, which, as a response to death. Implied that Martin and Pilavus are the ones who later saved Babette's life by keeping her with them. In all, reading the first paragraph gives me a horrible first impression on Babette. I even thought that she might be a wizard visiting the house. By the way, it is an interesting reference that in Chapter Seven, Martin and Philippa almost regard Babette as a wizard when her helper boy. As turtle in their soup. And meanwhile, it is clear that the author repeatedly used negative descriptions and the word "death" to indicate the merciless of the 1871 French Revolution. The letter written by Akil Pepin addressed afterward still strongly presents a sense of cruelty war. Moreover, it brings together the warring background with Babette's mysterious identity. The introduction of Babette makes me feel that instead of a wizard-like refugee, Babette is a hero of France with a sense of mysterious royalty. First, the words "French" were repeatedly used throughout the paragraph. Akil calls himself Frenchman and Babette Frenchwoman instead of me and Babette, which is surely noticeable. He then writes, "French hands has shed French blood," as a visual description of the civil war. But instead of that, he could simply do it like people kill each other there. The thing is, perhaps France, as a more powerful country than Norway, presents a sense of royalty to Martin and Philippa, 
and calling Babette French woman would provide them a better impression of Babette, and therefore they would say Babette instead of rejecting her, which is exactly the purpose of this letter. And beyond that, the sense of royalty is further emphasized by IQ by presenting Babette's full name, Madame Babette Hersent. And notice that nobody else is given a full name in the story except General Lovenhill. And he also compared Babette to the Empress of France, Eugénie de Mogil, also known as the last Empress Consort of French, the wife of Napoleon III. This makes me strongly confusing. Is she the same woman who arrived previously in such deadly condition? Martin and Philippe must have the same confusion, but certainly. The identity of Babette in the sister's eyes is not the wizard-like refugee anymore. In the aspect of the civil war, the formation of the Paris Commune in 1871 is caused mainly by two factors: the failure in the war against Prussia raised by Napoleon III, and the increasing dissatisfaction of the Paris working class. Babette's family, the Communards. Mentioned by Akio is certainly the working class or the lower middle class of Paris, who gather together as a new government, which fight for the rights of the workers and later help prevent Paris from being occupied by German armies. Under the repression by General Gallifet towards the Commune, Pavel's family was killed, and she herself was arrested as a patrolloi. However, she was actually setting fire to the vicious power. Fighting for the rights of the working class and the future of Paris, they were the hero of France. And it is now being realized that Babette is not a simple deadly pale refugee. In conclusion, by dividing the passage into two parts, it is clear to see that Denison uses a lot of metaphorical words as references to the warring background of the time. He sets an extremely negative scene for the deadly appearance of Babette in the first part, showing the mercilessness of the civil war, and implies by details in the latter in order to show her epic communard identity in the second part. The Paris Commune is a milestone event of French history, which is also the significant background that shapes the story of Babette's feat. What it is. And it has to be noticed that although I have analyzed the reference Dennis made towards the warring background in the passage above, there are a lot more inconspicuous words in the rest of the story, which also have references to other themes of the story, and these are what makes Babette's feast a great piece of work.